In this video, we explore data retrieval from a table. Tables in the AF database provide contextual information through the table lookup data reference. Tables can provide information about the equipment, processes, storage tag names, or other configuration information. Tables can be created internally, imported from an external relational database, tabular data source, or linked dynamically to an external relational database source. In this way, tables can expose information in maintenance, production planning, or equipment databases for use by the client applications. Switch to the Sweet and Savory database. Navigate to Elements tab, Sandbox, Packaging, and then FF01, and click on the Attributes tab. It may take a few minutes to update. Why is the response so slow? Based on the setup of the Sandbox FSS maintenance table, the slowness is caused by a single heavy hitter, the attribute last service date. This attribute is a table lookup, which means it looks up a value in a table with a SQL-like query. Let's look at the table we use to populate the last service date attribute. Let's go to the library, then open up the tables drop-down list. Move to the table named Sandbox FFS Maintenance and then navigate to the Table tab. How many rows are presented in this table? <laughs> Just way too many. There's about a million rows in this table. Do we need all the rows? No. The table named Sandbox FFS Maintenance is stored in a central SQL server at the corporate level and contains asset metadata for all production sites around the world. For our goals, we only need to retrieve the data for our pilot site. This has already been done correctly in the production environment, so we just need to understand how it works and replicate it to the sandbox environment. While we are still in the sandbox FFS maintenance table, click to the general tab. Now click on the link button. You'll see a connection and a query to an external SQL server. The current query is retrieving all the rows and columns from the external SQL table. There's about a million rows there. Now let's select the table production FFS maintenance. Move to the table and how many rows do you see? In this table we only see one row. It's because we have a default value set based on a parameter. Let's explore it a little bit further. Go to the General tab of the production table and hit Link. Check how the query is performed. You notice that the SQL query containing parameters where at asset equals asset. Go ahead and close this window. Using parameters in a linked table query is useful to limit the number of rows returned from a very large external table. You can add conditions and parameters to return more targeted results, such as all rows that include a device or manufacturer ID number specific for each table lookup data reference. Now let's go back to the sandbox table and edit the query so that we only get the needed information. Hit the general tab. Select link button. In the parameter section, add the parameter at asset with a default value of FFS01. Press add, located to the right of the default value box to include it in the query statement at runtime. Check in and click on refresh. Now open the table. How many rows do you see now? Only one row is returned and it corresponds to the default value of the SQL query. Now move to the templates. Element templates, F, uh, sandbox FFS, and select the attribute templates tab. Select the last service date and click on settings. Add the table parameter to the table lookup data reference. 
In this way, every time a value is requested by a table lookup attribute, the parameterized query will be passed to the external SQL Server and only the requested value will be returned. Click Check In to save your changes. Now to verify whether the caching performance has been improved, close PySystem Explorer. Then reopen PySystem Explorer and move between AF elements under the Sandbox branch, making sure you have the Attributes tab open. Do you notice any improvements in the data retrieval speed? When working with tables, you can parameterize your queries to only fetch data to be used. A rule of thumb is to avoid importing tables with over 10,000 rows.